Welcome to Conversations. I'm Muqtadar Khan. I'm the host of Conversation. I'm also a non-resident fellow with the New Lines Institute in Washington, D.C. The New Lines Institute is one of the fastest growing and one of the most respected and most prestigious think tanks in Washington, D.C. Uh, it focuses on geopolitics, international relations, and essentially also on foreign policy. So today, it is a great pleasure and honor to me to introduce you to an anthology that I have just published with the New Lines Institute. An anthology is essentially a collection of essays. It is an edited book. It is an ebook in the sense that the entire book is available to you in the electronic form on the web. We have both formats. We have the web format as well as the PDF format. You can download the entire book and read it, or you can read it on the web, whatever is convenient to you. The book is titled Universal Values and Foreign Policy, and I'm happy to report that some of the most prominent scholars in the field of international relations and foreign policy have contributed to this volume. The volume has eight essays. It is edited by me. I write the introductory essay and try to make the case that in this moment in history, when the global structure is transforming, when the rise of China is questioning the nature of the global order and the values that underpin that global order, do universal values also shape foreign policies of specially major powers? So in this anthology, scholars are making an argument essentially uh, about the role of universal values in foreign policy. The second essay in the anthology is by Professor Joseph Nye, who is one of the most prominent scholars of international relations and American foreign policy. He is the scholar who invented the concept of soft power. He's, he taught at Harvard for decades. He's a professor emeritus there. He's also served uh, in the Department of Defense and also the Department of State. He's, he was considered as one of the 100 most influential thinkers by the Foreign Policy magazine. And he argues that soft power is an important element that contributes to legitimacy of a nation and its foreign policy. And this legitimacy comes from respect for human rights and democracy. So he points out that on the soft power index, the super, the soft power 30, it is not accidental that the top nations are mostly democracies. China is now one of the top 10 countries when it comes to soft power, it's ranked four, but rest of the countries are democratic. And he argues therefore that uh, respect for universal values while articulating foreign policy is a source of legitimacy and soft power. The third essay is by Professor Michael Doyle, who is a very important voice on the role of ethics in international affairs. He traces the origins of the powerful international norm, R2P, responsibility to protect, even as it challenges the UN Charter, which frowns upon interventionism. Professor Doyle makes the nuanced argument that R2P is both a license for and in a leash upon use of force for interventions. In this day and age, it is very important to understand the power of R2P, especially when democracy is receding and more and more populations uh, in many countries are facing uh, violence and potential genocide. The fourth essay is by my colleague Stuart Kaufman, who is a prominent international relations theorist, whose work on symbolic politics is very well known. He examines the impact of norms and values on war and violence. He presents a mixed picture. In his assessment, we have witnessed a significant decline in interstate wars as well as civil wars. He also, however, points to a troubling reality. When wars do break out, there is less respect and adherence to values by states, especially with regard to protecting civilian lives. And uh, if anything, uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine uh, proves uh, Professor Kaufman right. The fifth essay is by Professor Jacqueline Ann Brave by Wagner, who is a prominent and recognized scholar of international relations of the Global South. In her essay, she explores two characteristics of the literature on the Global South. One is the debate about nomenclature and collective shared identity. Is the Global South underdeveloped, developed or developing? Is it fair to call it the third world anymore? 
And can China be considered as representative of the global south or can it even be included in the global south? The second issue that she addresses is, given the vast diversity of the nations that are considered to be part of the global south, are there really common values that shape their foreign policies? So essentially, she is problematizing the idea of uh, a narrowly defined set of values that perhaps all nations of the global south uh, can be expected to adhere. But she does say that opposition to armed intervention and hegemony are enduring principles that unite the global south, but they're also committed to democracy, good governance, and the responsibility of nations to protect. The sixth essay is by Professor Dina Abdul Qadr. She is an important scholar studying Islam and social justice. In this essay, she focuses on the scholarship of Imam al-Shatibi, whose work on the higher purposes of Islamic law, Makhasid al-Sharia, is playing an important role in how some contemporary Islamic jurists are redefining Islamic law and seeking to apply it to contemporary matters. She identifies the principle of public welfare, sometimes also referred to as maslaha, as one of the key elements of the approach to Islamic law. She examines the foreign policies of Middle Eastern nations and argues that the high goals of Islamic law do not really inform their foreign policies, which are mostly influenced by real politics. So essentially, she, or in her assessment, Muslim countries are not influenced by Islamic values when it comes uh, to foreign policy. They are uh, basically influenced by power politics. The seventh essay is by Jeffrey Haynes, one of the most prominent scholars of the role of religion in international affairs. Jeffrey Haynes does a very interesting comparison. He compares the US, India, and Israel and looks at their foreign policies. He's essentially trying to assess to what extent Judeo-Christian values influence the US, uh, Hindu values influence India, and Jewish values influence Israel. He observes that while some countries may pursue certain policy goals influenced by religious values or identity, he acknowledges that there are non-state actors too in the system that are motivated by religion. He discusses how religion is also a source of soft power for some of these nations. While Professor Haynes does not make a positive case for religion in foreign policy, he does succeed in showing that the world is not entirely secular, and even in democracies, religion can play an influential role in the making of foreign policy. And finally, an essay by another colleague of mine, Dan Bottomley, who is a rising star in the field of public diplomacy. With extensive experience in designing and conducting public diplomacy programs for the US State Department, he compares the public diplomacy efforts of the US, Germany, and China, and shows how values are at the core of all of these public diplomacy programs in all three programs, United States Fulbright program, Germany's uh, Goethe, Keith, uh, I don't know how you say Goethe Institutes and China's Confucius Institutes. The goal is to generate strategic influence, but they are all seeking to promote and project values. So essentially he talks about how public diplomacy is a way of projecting soft power or even generating soft power uh, by talking about the softer side of these nations. So these are the essays in the anthology, Universal Values and Foreign Policy. I hope you will take a look at them. You will use them in your classroom, share them with your students, and hopefully your future writings will also show that you have read this book. Thank you very much.